Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Welcome back to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide, and today it is Senpu Temple Mount Congo Part 2. And uh, after we killed Iron Robert, aye, and you've done the peddler and all that shit. So now it's just like onto the boss, I think. No, you don't even you don't even get to the boss. Actually, that's that's after the. Uh, no, no, there's a lot of things to do before the boss. Yeah, but okay. So we jump onto this roof, and there's like some wolves and shit around the edge. So we just use our shurikens to commit some like animal cruelty. Get rid of them, and it's as easy as that. I mean, and also if you hit them here, it'll alert this one, and then you don't even need to move. He comes to you, and you can come back to this area later on the game with Mibu breathing and get yourself some golden corp scales. You can if you jump into the once you've got the breathing technique, you just jump into the pond, and uh, you're good to go. And so I can drop like, shuriken. So I like fall off, but actually at this point I had to fall off anyway, so it was kind of useful. So there's a dog at the end of the pathway. Again, this is another uh, episode where I spent many, many, many an hour working out the optimum route. So again, please, please God hit the like button. <laughs> Fucking hell. So there is the sugar. Uh, and now we're gonna go down this route here where there's uh, some monkeys and shit. There's one kind of floating about. Yeah, you can get that one. Knock him off. A single shuriken and then a spinning shuriken. For good measure. The one two deal. There's also this guy just sitting here oblivious. Just wipe out with a single <laughs> spinning shuriken, okay. Imagine that, you're just like a monkey just enjoying your day and some guy's just like, Fuck you! Yeah! Throws a metal star at you. <laughs> so you need to be careful of your like your angle here. You can't be too um like too uh like too close to them, I guess. Otherwise you'll hit the, the edge of the the mountain, but just something to bear in mind. Anyway, continuing on, I mean, this bit's like super easy. This just like is like get some items out a dead end. Make sure you're you're crouching. Okay, kill this guy who's like mourning the death of his friend. Oh no, he's apparently he's, he wasn't even dead. That's it. You feel perfect stealth. A monkey saw you. <laughs> so there's just like a bunch of amoeba balloons down here, uh, which is basically Terrible. useless. But there's the persimmon that I was talking about. You just get one. So, yeah. and you need that for like a quest. So, get a heavy coin purse, which is obviously bad. yeah, pretty good. Another useless Mibu balloon. And I don't want to hear anything in the comments about how Mibu balloons are actually like, oh, well, I use that. No, you don't use them all the time. And even if you do, I don't give a fuck, okay? They're useless. They don't do anything. I saved myself 30 seconds of farming with my <laughs> Mibu balloon of wealth today. So, there's like a specific route to take, which allows you to kill all these guys in front of you without being caught. Yep, you can do it. So we may as well just kill these carps, like, just while you're here. Like, why Why not? Yeah, there's another one underwater, isn't there? Uh, not in this part, but there is two items underwater, but you get yeah, one of the items anyway, a different way, so there's only one item underwater. But anyway, uh, so you repel up this way, and then you get Fistful of Ash? Yeah. Yeah! Look at you saying a yeah, like you knew what it was. Fistful of Ashes? As opposed to a brimful. <laughs> <laughs> we 90s reference for you. <laughs> Half you aren't even old enough to know what that was. <laughs> and you've still the legal age to play Sekiro. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you're right. So, we kill that guy around the corner. We kill this guy. And somehow people 
are oblivious to this goings on. But then you can come up here. And then you can just got your free reign to backstab all these guys freely. It's pretty good. It's the best type of free reign. A free one. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. <laughs> so kill this guy, then we kill this guy. I think guy. they're meant to be like the closest things in the game to mages. Those ones that have the face covering. Nah, they just they, they like throw, like, throw shit at you. They throw like, like shuttlecocks or some shit at you. Yeah, and they blow up and shit. I think they're meant to be like wizards. Now, you probably thought I forgot this item, but I didn't. So, fuck ha. it. Delete that text right now, <laughs> commenter. <laughs> Go on, hit backspace. <laughs> I don't want to see anything in the comments about missing an item, aside from maybe in the last episode. <laughs> but I told you about it, so... Just hunt around that area, just to reiterate, I told you twice now, in this episode and this one. So, we're repelling up onto the roof, and there'll be like a bunch of those, uh, I guess they're called rats, like those two guys come up. So you need to go like around the roof, and like, kind of get them that they way. They don't seem very rodential, but apparently they're rats. Rodential isn't a fucking word, surely. Would you like to check my rodentials? <laughs> <laughs> that, the rats. So we can kill that guy. Has. And, um... Then we just move along. It's it's just like it's just good practice to like get these guys. The the general rule of thumb in Sekiro when it comes to the stealth seems to be walk around the outside to get behind the first group and then backstab them all from back to front. Go to where you started and walk around the next group and backstab <laughs> them all from back to front and yeah, because that's what you've done here. That's what you've done in the beginning. That's what you've done in the last part. Oh, there, was a, there was there was admittedly a little bit more axe and fang in the part before that. But so that takes care of all those guys. So now you can see that there's like a cliff in front of us. Now this is ends up being like a shortcut to the like the later part of the game. I'll come back and show you it though, so don't you don't need to worry. But um yeah, just pointing it out. So we can drop tag this guy, and that takes care of all the rats in here. And then there's like a bunch of like guys that grow tentacles or some shit in that room. We're not gonna bother fighting them. We're just gonna grab the stuff and get going. We've got we've got shit to do. We ain't one of these guides that fucks about. We get it done. So, light coin purse, and uh, into this room, I and then we just- remember what's in here. Uh, fat fat wax. wax, so it's like an upgrade material, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's for upgrading the, the fire one, I think. The flame vent or something like that, I can't remember. So, I'm gonna use this point as like a kind of marker. Uh, this is like a kind of cut off point to like the next stage of like this area. Uh, so, there's like two routes to go, but we're gonna go this way because this is like a boss and this gives you like a prayer bead. So you wanna jump onto this big roof here and um, repel onto the rafters. Kill these guys, they're easy enough. For some reason it's like quite hard to like jump off these beams. So it's really easy to just like jump on the beam and like get your attack going. It's, you, all you need to do is like jump at them and you can just like kill them immediately. Yeah, apparently they are afraid of jumping people and you just get a visceral for free. Yeah. So then you can kill the guys like on the floor, which is pretty easy, but you want to kill all these guys before attempting to do the boss. Or I mean in this case if you've got if you've got like a good like jump at it, just like get your boss drop attack, quickly kill the other guy. Yeah, because you just jump forward visceral and then So this guy's like another kind of like gimmick, right? Where you want to just smash L1 when he does these attacks. He does like a little pause. Um sometimes so like after you can like jump on his head. Um, but it'll do like a kind of... It's an unblockable. And you can jump over it and yeah. land on his head. This like, one. right there. That's sweet. No, I keep fucking up because I'm like, either too close to like a wall and he doesn't do it or some shit, but there we go. You can jump on his head, get in like a hit, and then just continue on blocking. And then he's kind of like that Ashina guy where ultimately um, you just like deflect him. Like deflection is the way you kill him essentially. And there's a second one in Gunfork. There is, with. there is. So now all we do is pick up the remaining items in this area, which, which will um, be upgrade materials probably. Uh, yeah, as well as I think the did we get the prayer bead off him? Like I can't yeah. remember. We just like I can't select the messages. It drops so. with him. Cool, cool. So now we just continue on with the rest of the mountain, which is like it's basically very easy. Um, and there's like one bit that requires like the slightest bit of nuance, and that nuance is just running. So. So, like, you probably won't have much of an issue here. Uh, so what, one thing I want to ask is, that if you're new to this game and you found the guide or whatever, did you, did you like, act, somehow miss this area? Because I, I feel like it's, like, meant to be missable, but I, I don't see how. 
Honestly, the first thing I done when I seen that rooftop that was like beside. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I'm just gonna jump over there. Maybe they, maybe they just. Like it kind of has the feeling like semi that you can't go there. So you can just use your shuriken to like kill these wolves from a distance, and then there's annoyingly just another mebo balloon at the end. So yeah, yay. Really useful items. It's the oh, worst geckos, one as well. There's geckos there as well. Now, sometimes this guy will get alerted and come for you. Sometimes he won't. But either way, it doesn't really matter. But if he is at the top here, like, he sh he'll sometimes be floating about round about this area. You kind of want to bait him down. That way you don't alert the other guys here, basically. Um, so I'm just going to, like, show you. If, like, you can just go and kill those, like, two guys immediately. It's, it's just two guys. It's not going to be a problem. But I just kind of want to show you in terms of like orientation where we are. So this is me just going around the edge of that cliff to avoid them. But you can um, just repel up here and essentially we're now at the anchor point that I was saying. Like this is, if you jump down to the left there, that's you back here where we are. So just, just so you can get like a kind of, you know, gather your bearings. <coughs> so now we're like properly moving on. So you can like just kind of like jump up here, I guess, and then you can like drop attack these guys. You can drop attack one of them. I wish there was a skill that let you like kill two guys via drop attack. That'd be that'd be pretty good. Uh, later you have kung fu moves, so you can drop attack one and then go straight into kung fu and build the posture on the angle around the viscerals. <laughs> I guess, really but the kung fu moves are still nowhere near as good as the axe, so it kind of makes... no, they're better than the axe actually. He's objectively wrong. Don't listen to I him. I mean, I know I'm objectively wrong. <laughs> That's all this guide is doing. That's why you made it. What, to just prove you wrong? <laughs> this is like my clockwork orange. <laughs> <laughs> just in a chair with my tape, with my eyes like taped open, watching you play Sekiro incorrectly. <laughs> and tell people this is how you play Sekiro. <laughs> and so, still be correct. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the fist full of ash. Now there's this guy here, right? Um, you can backstab him, but he does like change his view periodically. So just kind of make sure that you're not going to like move into him moving to like face you essentially. So just bear that in mind. So I'm just speeding this little bit up here. There's like a patrol. Once you kill this guy, uh, this patrol starts moving down. So I'm just kind of waiting for him to pass. It takes a little bit of time, but it means that you can just like backstab the guy with the shield without having to deal with him. Because you know what we don't like doing in this game? Dealing with things. <laughs> That's what the axe is for. Exactly. The axe loves dealing with things, but it can only deal with certain things. <laughs> uh, I think we might have missed an item. I know, I, I'm pretty sure I'll go back and get it. Um, I just want to, like, clear the last of these guys out. I, I, if not, you'll have passed it and you'll have grabbed it. I, I can't quite remember if I picked up that item. I don't know why I wouldn't, but I was probably recording this at four in the morning, so... Oh, you've seen it anyway. Right, so kill this guy, that's the last of him, sugar, and then I think I get randomly caught there in like mid-air. So I do go back and get it, okay, cool. I'll just clear them out. So it's like an ungo sugar, I guess you could have just picked it up on the way. It is what it is, it doesn't really matter. It's crap anyway. Uh, no, no, it's good for bosses. Good for bosses. sugar? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, for the last stage of Ishin and for your second and first dad fight, the... I mean... Um, you it's say good. this as if I've ever played a like tank and spank Sekiro build. <laughs> uh, well, you'll see. You'll see how they've been relevant. So um, you want to like repel up here. Realistically, you probably want to like. I, I thought I could be like smart, but ultimately, just like you just need to drop attack one, then kill the other. You can't really like do it in a way where you drop attack this guy and he doesn't notice, but you always notice. But also, like that just doesn't matter because like that happens. So. Now. There's an item under the stairs. I know that someone is going to be like, ah, 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 but what about... Well, there it is, there I go. Backspace button again, please. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you untype that message right now. Now you can corner, uh, grab this monk that's like coming here, so that's pretty nice. Comment edited. Never mind, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, instead of fighting these guys, you just run for this door, open it, you'll get the iframes. They'll try to kill you, but then they don't follow you into the, the hall. And um, that's amazing. Because it means that you never need to deal with these guys. And they're a fucking pain in the ass. 
But they, they know their place. They know that they, they're not allowed Do you want to know what else is a pure pain in the arse? What? I didn't know you could open that door from that side. You're fucking joking. No, every time I just ran around the long way and went oh through. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I assumed because it does not open from this side because I only ever seen the prompt from the other side of the door. <laughs> I've played this game like twice. Sue me. <laughs> Sorry they didn't make it replayable. So there's some items here. Uh, there's like two on this, the, the other end. There's a pellet on this end. Yeah, I always came through from that side. Insane. Like, I just ran around. That's why I got really good at the jumping visceral. Right. Because I just now had it makes to. sense. Because <laughs> I was like, man, this bit is so hard. And I was like, oh yeah, there's leaping visceral. Got good with that. And then I was like, it's easy. So in case you're like Steven, uh, you can just open the door and the door protects you, like in true Dark Souls no, fashion. No, I knew I got iframes. I just assumed that in true Dark Souls fashion, I'd run up, try to get the iframes, and go, does not open from this side. I mean, it makes sense, I guess. But they've conditioned you into thinking something. No, exactly. I've been conditioned for four games into believing something, and then they go like, here's Sekiro, don't dodge, <laughs> open doors from any side, and this. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck is, so I had to like, f <laughs> so I was like, god damn it, and then I'm like, oh, I can, wait, I can just repel, so it's quite good. Now, no, one hell of a shinobi you've turned into. So you can speak to this guy, um, and he gives you the holy chapter of the infested, which you need for a quest later on or something like that. I, I don't, you need it for something. Um, it's like irrelevant what you need it for because you just follow what we're doing. Uh, so then now there's like another couple of things to do. This gets you one of the skill trees going this way. This gets you like the monk skill tree, which there's like a few good things on it. Um, Leaping kick is fantastic. <laughs> Like, it's cool, but it's also not like There's so many good ones. It lets you cover so much distance and you can get behind the enemies. But, oh, it's so fun. You don't need it, but it's just so fun. Now, if you'd beaten Genichiro and came here, you'd be able to go straight to the folding screen monkey boss. But yeah. you've not beat Genichiro, so we're just coming here to get all the stuff that you can get before Genichiro, so that way he's not the biggest pain in the ass that's ever existed. Genichiro isn't, anyway. You just need to learn how to play the game. Let it man, it took me like like twelve hours <laughs> to beat him the first time. So it's just a couple items here. We 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 grabbing this. Uh, is it the mission text? Are they all called mission text? I can't remember. He's the same who he's text. Cool. Get some emblems and uh, repel across. That I did know about, but not the fact that that door opens from the outside. Sick. That's good. See, it's, it's a learning work. day for everybody. <sighs> this really is my clockwork orange. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like <laughs> the pupil has surpassed the master. <laughs> so, we're going to start off by getting Ichimonji. Now, the reason for this is we're never going to use it, but there's a couple of like passive buff skills that are like explicitly very, very good. Do so. more posture damage when you block, do more posture damage when they don't block. Or if they've got like a sword or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, this is me just showing you the shortcut bit now. Um, if this is the anchor point again. So I'm just going to show you the, like, the, the little... You can skip most of this part. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And climbing up the surface of the fucking wall, that's you. Done. So there's like randomly like a guy here that you don't need to f I, This bit doesn't lead to like another item or anything no, like that. No, it doesn't. No, you have to kill so many of these guys for Thingy's quest line so he gives you that text. That what? ninja guy from Gyobu. Like, the but one we've already, like, we've already got already done this thing. What the fuck are you on about? You no, kill the three outside and he gives you it. Isn't there something no. further with his quest line? As, as it turns out, there actually isn't. And I thought there was. Huh. I also thought he's supposed to be Ishin. He's not. He just appears dead later on in the game. Yeah. So, oh, well, there you go then, never yeah. mind. So, um, we can just jump up here, but you need to like be slightly more elevated, and you just skip pretty much everything we've just done. We just go straight to here, which is kind of nice, I suppose. But then the thing is, is that the stuff that you get is like so good that I don't know why you'd want to like skip the bead. I guess the other stuff like cut, like going around the outside is kind of relevant, so you can just come up this way if you really want to. But that is it for this episode, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. I learned that the door opens from the outside of the building, <laughs> so you'll probably see me in the next one. <laughs>